St. Louis for a trip down Sunset Boulevard. I'm Dan Buck, live backstage with a story about the man who has the leading role in this Broadway musical. He has local ties. That story next on Show Me the Fox. This show is absolutely dazzling, in part because of the thousands of rhinestones and beads. We'll show you how they keep the beautiful costumes looking like new. Good evening, everyone. I'm Wendy Bell. Hey, did you know it takes 52 trucks to move Sunset Boulevard here to St. Louis? What's even more impressive is what it takes to move all these sets on the stage. I'll tell you about it coming up. And while Linda Belgard plays an aging divorcee on stage, in real life, she's happily married to the stage manager. We'll tell you about their life on the road next on Show Me the Fox. Live from Channel 5, it's Show Me St. Louis. Good evening, everyone. I'm Debbie Turner. And I'm John Pertzborn. Welcome for a look at, behind the scenes look at, Sunset Boulevard. Yes. yes. We're live at the Fox Theater, folks. This is going to be great. This is. You might even hear them doing a little sound check in the background <laughs> as we go through the show. Now, this is Andrew Lloyd Webber's Tony Award winning musical. It's a little bit unusual, John, because usually a musical is turned into a movie later. Yeah. But in this case, this was first a movie that has now been turned into a musical. That's right. Billy Wilder's film Sunset Boulevard looked at the dark side of Hollywood. It starred William Holden as Joe Gillis, a struggling screenwriter who comes in contact with an aging film star, Norma Desmond, played here by Gloria Swanson. The two form an alliance they think will be advantageous to both, but it all ends in tragedy. Now, while captivated by the film, Lloyd Webber worried about the musical adaptation. Sorry, that's the lonely. I'll have the milk. I was worried that actually, whether, whether actually you care about the people in it. Because in one sense, you could say, well, there is an old movie actress who's really rather rich. Do you, do you relate to her? And a young boy who's taking, if you like. And is that rather unsympathetic? Despite Lloyd Webber's concerns, the production opened in 1993, first in London and then in Los Angeles to critical acclaim, John. And of course, it opened here in St. Louis, and the opening was sort of a homecoming for the male star. Yeah, you're talking about Ron Bomer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he plays Joe Gillis, who's a screenwriter, and he actually went to Webster University. So when he came back to St. Louis, yeah, it was a little sentimental. And Dan Buck is backstage right now because he went back to Webster University with him. Danny, what was that like? Oh, he was very excited, obviously, and he's excited to be performing here in St. Louis while Ron grew up in the city of Cincinnati it was here in St. Louis that his acting career really blossomed at Webster University and when the show rolled into town here he made sure and made it a point to return to his alma mater and our cameras were rolling as we made that reunion Sunset Boulevard Roofless Boulevard Destination for the Stony Hearted He brings passion to his profession actor Ron Bomer knew that he was the perfect fit for the part of Joe Gillis, the lead in Sunset Boulevard, an accomplished singer, a versatile actor, and a resume that includes roles in Les Miserables and Fiddler on the Roof. But long before Broadway, Bomer was here. We had to audition at the beginning of each semester, so some of my greatest theatrical flops took place on this stage. It's a homecoming for Ron, memories revisited, a place he called home from 79 to 83. This whole wing that we're getting ready to walk into actually is, is um, wasn't even here when I was here. While some structures at Webster University have changed, many faces have not. It's great to see you. Yes, I brought a crowd really? with me. You had to get rid of the glasses, right? <laughs> Showing my age. How are you? Hugs and hellos are in order, from the man who taught him to dance to the inspiration behind his music. You need to look at this. Hey. <laughs> I heard you practicing. I thought, I know that song. Ron should know it. He wrote it. And his old teacher is merely preparing for its debut performance. Heroes and heartaches. Byron saved my life. Byron came in to head the musical theater program when I was a senior. And that was like the year that everything like came together for me. So I, I owe a huge portion of my success to this guy right here. Today, Ron is here to share that success. He'll speak to a room full of starry-eyed students, sharing not only his triumphs, but the reality of rejection. You still get this. I still get this feeling when I'm at auditions, that feeling that, well, if I hang around, maybe they'll, you know, a divine inspiration will strike and go, wait, that guy who was in here five minutes ago, he, what was I thinking? <laughs> you, come back in here. <laughs> His wit is amusing, but just as he does on stage, Ron inspires their hearts with song. Why not believe in impossible schemes? Banish your fear and your doubt. When the lights go out. 
that. A neat moment. That was the first time Ron Bomer performed that song, When the Lights Go Out. It's going to be on a new CD that he's going to be releasing. It'll be the first cut on a new CD called Every Man. Ron has already got his billboards out, but that CD won't be released until later this spring. We'll keep you posted on that. But it's neat to see John and Debbie, a local star, doing so well in a production like this. And our best wishes go out to Ron, his wife Leah, and their two daughters. But I don't think this guy needs much luck. He's on his way to a fabulous career. Oh, he does yeah. a fabulous job Absolutely. in this production. He has great pipes. Oh, yeah. unbelievable singer. And this CD is going to be great. And All a right, nice Dan. guy. That's right. All right, Dan, thanks a lot. Guys. Now, you know, some of the biggest names in theater have played the leading female role That's what I hear. in Sunset Boulevard. It all started off with Glenn Close. She opened the show out in Los Angeles. And then other stars who have taken the challenge are Patti Lapone, Betty Buckley, Diane Carroll, Rita Marino, and even Petula Clark has taken on the role. And I understand, John, that you had a chance to sit down and speak with the woman who plays the part of Norma Desmond. Yes, I did. And, folks, I was shocked when I met her. <laughs> I was really shocked. Were you really? Yes, because she looks nothing like the woman she plays on stage, and that really pleases her husband. <laughs> oh, I have a wonderful time next year. I have a pool band for you. When Linda Balgord isn't on stage playing the part of Norma Desmond, folks, there's no way you'd recognize her. I have enough money to buy us anything we want. No, I rarely get recognized. That's because she's half the age of the woman she plays. Aside from gender, there are no similarities. Linda doesn't even have a fancy house like this set to call home. We actually don't even have a home to go to because <laughs> the apartment we were living in in New York, uh, the owners were selling it. So when we left for the tour, we put all of our stuff in storage. So we really are gypsies right now. Carrying portable pictures of their families from city to city. But at least they're together. This Wisconsin native's English husband, Andrew, is Sunset's stage manager. It's uncommon to find married couples working the same production. I look at myself as slightly as a flight attendant as well. You know? we're, we're, we're there backstage to make sure everyone's in their place. And, make sure they're all happy and you know rehearsals run as well as well as the show in other words there's no time for hanky panky except on stage do you get really upset during the kissing scenes no i don't actually uh, <laughs> well that well linda has been kissing ron for about four years now <laughs> <laughs> and it's never gone beyond <laughs> it's, you know, it's never gone beyond that no i, I know it's linda's job it's, it's what she has to do so i, I didn't take it doesn't affect me at all. Besides, all that makeup kind of frightens Andrew. A little bit, yeah. Uh, maybe I, I can see what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I think I scared him last night because it was really hot on stage, you know, because it's so humid. And there's no air conditioning on the stage at the Fox. And so I was, I was in a kind of a bad mood because it was really hot last night. So they hear about it, whoever's the closest stage manager. It's really hot out there. Andrew knows how to scare Linda as well. Recently, he informed his wife she climbs approximately 700 stairs a week, 2,800 per month, which adds up to 33,000 stairs per year. He's the one that counted them and told me the number as if I want to know. <laughs> And right now, folks, let's take a live look at Linda putting on some of that scary makeup. Boy, she has to put a lot on to make herself look a little bit older. As for the future, the two don't have plans, Debbie. They say they really enjoy being together, which, as mm -hmm. I said, is very uncommon mm -hmm. on a production like this. So they're just taking advantage of the moment and enjoying being together. That's a neat opportunity for them. Yeah. Well, we know what their immediate future holds. In the next two weeks, they're going to be right here at the Fox Sunset Boulevard. Runs through March 22nd. You can choose from eight performances each week, which are Tuesday through Sunday. There are matinee performances on Saturday and Sunday. Ticket prices range from $17 to $62. If you need any more information or you want to order your tickets, you can call the Fox box office or you can call Metro Tix at 534-1111. Well, folks, don't touch that zapper because when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of those elaborate costumes and the people who keep them looking new. And you will be absolutely amazed when we show you what it takes to move the Sunset Boulevard giant set from place to place. You won't want to miss that, so don't go away. Show Me the Fox is sponsored by Jack in the Box. Well, what about a blimp, sir? The Sourdough Jack blimp. Yeah, that's appetizing. Look, our Sourdough Jack isn't your typical burger. We're combining crunchy grilled sourdough with a big, juicy cheeseburger. This Sourdough Jack could be huge. Huge. So how do we spread the word? 
How about a website? <laughs> uh, Jack, I know some guys. We could spread the word for you. People, we're here to discuss a threat to our private playground, the Internet. Sprint Internet Passport. Notice the software that makes sense of all the technical stuff you used to need a nerd for. A powerful menu that makes it easy to find what you want. It even has 24-hour expert assistance, not to mention a big shot spokesperson to tell everyone about it. So what's stopping someone like my mother from getting on the net now? Nothing. Oh, that's right. Sprint Internet Passport with unlimited use. Call now for 30 days free. What does it take to be innovative? Take a look at Frigidaire. It's the first ever range with a warming area on top, a warming drawer on the bottom. Both keep dinner ready until you are. And take the Frigidaire Gallery dishwasher with advanced new features to wash a half a load at a time or a whole load using just six gallons of water. It took Frigidaire to introduce the first built-in water filter putting clean ice and water within reach. So cheers to innovation and to you taking a closer look at Frigidaire. This is Steve, and these are all the people who... The cast of Sunset Boulevard depends on the crew to keep them looking their best each night. Five wig masters, count them folks, five, are responsible for 110 different wigs, all made from genuine human hair. Stylist Gary Martori says the wigs reflect the characters' moods in the production, and they provide a perfect hiding place for those pesky wireless microphones. Taking care of the wigs is enough to make a worker pull their hair out. Each one is washed and set for every show, which is eight times a week. Well, they go through a lot because she, you know, she's very busy in the show. She's on the show. She's on stage all the time. And it's just repairing them, you know, setting them, keeping them to stay curly before she has to wear it. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I'll bring this upstairs, it'll be straight. So I have to watch that. Mm. And, you know, I've been talking to those people because I'm trying to get them to make us some wigs for those for bad, bad hair, hair days. days. Yeah. I wish we had them, let me tell you. <laughs> but really, it is a very complex procedure, but it's not the most complex procedure with this production. No, welcome back, everybody. Show Me the Fox continues with a look at the extravagant costumes that are part of Sunset Boulevard. Take a look. <laughs> they steal every scene, captivating the audience. I'm not referring to the actors, I'm talking about their clothes. The 29 cast members of Sunset Boulevard wear more than 200 costumes, lavish and dazzling every one. Rhinestones are everywhere, encrusted in Norma Desmond's shoes, even sparkling in the hosiery. But it's really the bugle beads that abound. Norma's beaded coat, top, and trousers are adorned with two and a half million beads, requiring 600 hours to hand bead. So you can actually hear this coming down the stairs. The beads. The weight of this extravagant leopard print dress is like carrying around a small child. The actress, besides having to act and sing, she's got to deal with the costumes, which is no easy feat either. And it's not easy caring for all these costumes. Workers check all the outfits daily for wear and tear. Repairs are constantly being done, one beat at a time, by hand. Seamstress Georgina Slotik says there's no specific training for this kind of work. You just do it on the job. You say, make one like this, and you make one like that. <laughs> Where are you going to train for that? Lynn Salzman is one of 10 professional dressers that help with costume changes. She says the most important aspect of her job is making sure Norma never misses a cue. Absolutely. I want it to go right. I don't want any mistakes. So there's definitely that air of, I've got to get in here. I've got to get it right. It's got to be done. Which is much easier said than done. One of Norma's changes must be done in a lightning 21 seconds. So she actually sometimes needs three people to help her in and out of costumes. Many of the jewels are copies of originals owned by Hollywood legends. The originals worth a fortune. The jewels are copies, but the fur is the real thing. Designer Anthony Powell felt anything but the actual fox fur on this suit would look, well, fake. So of course the fur and jewels must be stored in a secure place. We keep all the jewelry in here as we travel and it protects it, keeps all the, the rhinestones in place, and it's covered up, and then it's locked up securely at night, along with the silver fox. The lockers were custom made for the costumes and jewels, so everything is kept safe and sound until the next performance. 
Well, I tell you what, John, those costumes probably work as hard, if not harder, than the actors. You can understand why they need repairs all the time. And because Norma Desmond has to change so often and change so quickly, those designer dresses have industrial strength zippers in them. Yeah, I think I've seen those zippers on old Boy Scout tents, you know, the big thing. Yeah, it's kind. just that kind. <laughs> yeah, that's what they need. Well, you know, Norma's uh, butler. Mm -hmm. also has to change like three times in this production, but most people don't even notice. The guy I'm talking about, his name is Ed Dixon, and uh, he plays the mysterious Max to perfection. He says the character's solo performances inspired him to try out for the part because he loves the music and the vocal range. But Max has a secret behind his devotion to Norma, and Ed says playing that unhappy role is emotionally draining. During the rehearsals, I, I was like weepy all the time, and in some of the early performances uh like at the intermission you know when when norma pulls joe down on top of her and max has to leave the room i just started crying one night i couldn't stop crying i cried through the whole intermission hmm. gee he's obviously an emotional guy he apparently really throws himself into he that does. role and that's a sign of a good actor he mm -hmm. said he had to learn to tell the difference between real life and make believe with this production mm. also you have to come here to see this to find out what max's secret is yes and if you want to see sunset boulevard right now you have a chance because we're going to give away two tickets in our trivia contest yeah all right listen very <laughs> carefully now major renovations were made on the fox and it's it held its reopening gala in april of 1982 but the very first musical production was not on stage until september of that year so our question is what was the first musical held at the renovated fox theater mm. Be the first person to call 969-5550 with the correct answer, and you get to see Sunset Boulevard free. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And you know, another star of this production is the set design, folks. Oh, absolutely. When we come back, Wendy Bell is going to take us backstage to see what it takes to move this mammoth set into the Fox. Plus, Lauren Kennedy plays Betty, a role that comes close to her real-life experiences. Don't go away, folks. For years, coronary artery... Welcome back to the fabulous Fox, everyone. Say, did you know the house used in the 1950 movie Sunset Boulevard isn't even on Sunset? It's really on Wilshire Boulevard and was once owned by J. Paul Getty. And you know, making that set behind that curtain right there mm -hmm. look really good is a difficult job. It is a difficult job. Now, both of us have seen this production, and I think you agree with me that the set probably is one of the most impressive parts of the whole production. Yeah, I was here on opening night, and it almost got a standing ovation when it It deserves out. one. Yeah. It absolutely deserves one. Well, Wendy Bell is backstage right now, and she's going to explain to us why, why some critics call Sunset Boulevard some set <laughs> boulevard. Isn't that right, Wendy? Uh, it's neat, and that's no big secret, John and Debbie, considering this blockbuster Broadway show has 50 pieces of scenery, and some of those scenes require that all 50 move together at the same time. Well, how do they do it, and how does this show tour from coast to coast? We found out. Take a look. It takes 52 semi-trucks to move, three whole weeks to unpack, and the technical talent of 40 crew members to set up. But all that makes sense, since Sunset Boulevard is the largest nationally touring Broadway show to ever hit the road, and to ever stop here at the Fox Theater. The physical production designed by John Napier is extraordinary in, in, its, in its size, its detail, the costuming. It's almost unfathomable that this could tour could actually get around the country. But since 1995, this $12 million production has done just that, while amazing audiences all around the globe. The total weight of the show with actors, the lights, scenery, all the motors that fly, all the scenery is 160,000 pounds. It's um, the largest tour that's on the road. Bill Roberts is the production stage manager who's in charge of loading and unloading Sunset's 80 tons of sets and props. It is indeed a task of tonnage, one that requires an arsenal of trucks and a small army of workers to move from town to town. All of these units track on and off hydraulically, and when they're not on stage, they're flown in the air. They, we have 110 chain motors that can lift from two to 3,000 pounds. Most shows have about nine or ten. But Sunset is unlike any other show. In fact, during each of their eight weekly performances, it takes a stage crew of 50 people to ensure the show's 22 scenes move exactly the right way at exactly the right times. 
Now, without a doubt, Sunset Boulevard's most impressive set is this one, the Magnificent Mansion. It weighs 44,000 pounds, but thanks to the power of computer technology, it can be moved in a matter of moments. And that computer technology was invented and patented specifically for this production. It's a science predicated on precision and safety. The two computers that operate, each, the lifts on each side, can only get out of sync by an eighth of an inch and then they shut down. And uh, that's how fail safe it was built so that no one would be hurt. And thanks to a $2 million, 20 foot expansion of the stage a few years ago, the Fox Theater can now lure blockbuster Broadway shows to St. Louis. Shows like Sunset Boulevard that you and your family can enjoy through March 22nd. Ah, and please do. It is absolutely phenomenal. John and Debbie, as we mentioned in that story, it takes three weeks to set this wonderful show up. Interestingly, to tear it down and get it ready for the next city, nine hours. Wow. Wild. So if you, haven't, if you haven't come, folks, please do. It's fantastic for the whole family. It weighs so much, it's amazing. It just doesn't collapse into one of the caves under St. Louis. I know. I don't <laughs> it is so incredible. So come on out. We'll see you at the fall. Thanks, Wendy. Bye. Now, one of the characters says that she's used to an elaborate set. Uh -huh. Lauren Kennedy plays the part of Betty Schaefer. Now, in the play, Betty Schaefer says that she grows, grew up in the movie business. She says she gave acting a shot, but preferred writing. Now, Lauren, the actress, loves acting and singing. And like the character she plays, Lauren says show business is, well, in her blood. My sister and I and my little brother, we all did it growing up, and my parents uh, they weren't, weren't actors, but they certainly did um, some, you know, community stuff a little bit when I was a kid. So I got to see them do it, and therefore it, it uh, intrigued me to want to do it myself. Now, she says that she's not a stranger to this play. This is not the first role that she's played in Sunset Boulevard. Lauren was actually a part of the ensemble when the show opened in Los really? Angeles. Really? Yeah. Very versatile. She's a veteran. Yeah, well, hey, folks, don't go away. When we come back, we are going to have the trivia answer. But before we go, we're going to show you how you can get your tickets to Sunset Boulevard. Show me. Ah. Thank you. Sunset Boulevard, tempting Boulevard, waiting there to swallow the unwary. Dreams are not enough. I've got to stop myself from singing along. I know, it is so catchy. <laughs> I've been singing, with one Okay, stop. never mind. <laughs> you know, Deb, I was just backstage and I was talking to Norma Desmond and she said, darling, we have a winner in today's or tonight's trivia contest. And she's absolutely she's right. right. Let me remind you of the question first. The Fox Theater reopened in 1982. Now, the first musical production opened September 7th of that year and Joe Poole of Alton, Illinois, knew that the show was Barnum. And that marked the grand reopening of the Fox. Congratulations to you, Joe. You win two tickets to Sunset Boulevard. I guarantee you, you will enjoy the show. And here's some more trivia for you. Do you know what the next big show is? That's I happen here? to know. It's this summer that's in right. June. Showboat. You're right. It's going to be a lot of fun, a very lavish production. As a matter of fact, it was one of the most honored shows of the 1994-1995 Broadway season, winning five Tony Awards, including Best Revival. Showboat boasts some classic songs like John's favorite, Only Make Believe, Don't Sing It. John. Oh, I can't help it. Of course, and also Old Man River. The show opens at the Fox June 22nd. Tickets go on sale March 16th. Don't worry about re remembering those dates. We will remind you of them as they come. Well, either my watch is too fast or it's the end of the evening, Time folks. Flies. We want to thank you for joining us tonight, and we want you to tune in for a regular show tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We're heading off for Clayton, folks. Gallery Nights is coming up Friday. Debbie and I will show you where to enjoy the works on display at 10 galleries all in one evening. Also, we're going to tell you how your children can... They've sold more Broadway tickets than any pair in the 20th century.